episode of 2022's NFMQ Live Chat. My name is Anthony Benjamin Adiaba, and I am moderating tonight's conversation with three doctors. Um, two of them are medical doctors, and one is a doctor of pharmacy. Um, the three of them are from the St. Peter Senior High School NSMQ 2014. They made it to the finals and lost to Achimoto School. But that's not what we are talking about today. Today we are talking about life the 18 years between their time on the NSMQ stage and how life has treated them and what they remember from the quiz and stuff. So good evening, gentlemen, and welcome to the NSMQ live chat. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. So I'm going to start by introducing um, squadron leader um, Evans Bidiaku Dinkunin. Um, and then we also have here Dr. Shaw Tabaka, who is a bit of a legend among the first covers. And then we have the man himself, DJ Ziegler, also known as Dr. NST Abua. So these are the people we are talking to this evening. And um, I'm just going to give Squadron Leader the chance to lead the conversation and tell us a little bit about himself and what the NSMQ means to him. So Evans, please, the floor is yours. Thank you, Tony. I'm squadron leader, a senior military officer at the 37 military hospital and a pharmacist. I'm actually in charge of the hematology oncology pharmacy unit. And I'm, I'm married with, with three kids, maybe a little bit of family background. And yeah, I think that would be, that would be that for, for an, a brief intro. Okay, thank you, um, squadron leader. Um, I'm going to let Dr. Shelter Baka also take the floor and tell us a little bit about himself. Yeah, so um, my name is uh, Shelter Baka. Uh, I'm a doctor with the uh, Norfolk and Norwich University Hospital, uh, which is a, a tertiary hospital based in the uh, east of England uh, now. I am currently doing a specialization in um, nephrology, um, so that's um, things to do with kidney, and um, I'm hoping to um, add on a component of um, data science and uh, and incorporate into what I'm doing uh, now. Uh, my, my hobbies um, include uh, football. I'm an ardent uh, Liverpool supporter. I love playing video games um, and I do a bit of photography as well. So um, that's a brief just about me. Okay. I didn't know about the photography. That's mm. the, the, the talents keep increasing. Um, mm -hmm. Then we have we also have. DJ Ziegler, the, the only doctor I know who is a, who's a DJ as well. Um, and as Deborah, please tell us a little bit about yourself. Okay, thank you. Um, so I am Dr. Ernest Deborah. Uh, I'm an emergency physician. And uh, currently I am subspecializing in critical care at the Kolebu Teaching Hospital. Uh, if I am not working as a doctor, I am a professional DJ. Goes by the name DJ Ziegler. Um, <laughs> If I am not working as a doctor or DJ, then most of the time I'm looking into technological advancements in science. I'm looking at DIY projects. I'm looking at how to reach out and help people in my community, basically. Uh, I'm currently in a relationship and looking to settle very soon. Uh, I have interest in agriculture as well. So I think that's, that's basically it. Okay, um, well, we are looking forward to seeing you settle then. Uh, so, <laughs> with, without beating about the bush too much, um, let's start with NSMQ 2004. Um, I don't know if you, you want me to keep going in the same order or someone wants to talk about their time on stage, their time preparing for the quiz, going all the way to the final and missing out on the ultimate. So, I don't know who, who, who is ready to take this up or should I just point, point at anyone? <laughs> Okay, well, I, I, I can take it up. Okay, so NS, tell us about NSMQ 2004. What do you remember from all those years ago? 
2004. Hmm. Well, it was was it was a very interesting year for us as a team. Uh, you know, every contest uh, starts with uh, pre-contest favorites, and so you would say during that year the pre-contest favorites were Presec because they had won the year before, and then Opokuari had won in 2002 or so. Yes, uh, Azuri. Yes, so they were more or less pre-contest favorites. St. Peter's, we were more or less outside favorite because we had been to the final. Uh, uh, Alebna met Azure in the final. And so, yeah, we're outside favorite, basically. But within a contest, you always find, uh, it, uh, you find people who start the contest and then as the contest, contest goes along, you, you determine favorites, right, based on that. And I would say that our squad was one of those uh, people or one of those groups of people where uh, when we started the contest, uh, we, we we were at the school to get the highest score that, that year. We repeated that score twice against two very good, the Stardell and then Presec. Um, only to go to the final and then <laughs> uh, lose, lose it. But I, I guess such is life. Uh, basically, yes, I mean, it was, it was quite an interesting contest. We, we, we are a, a squad that was very dynamic, okay? We, we, we have a, a couple of other stories we can tell as it goes on. It's because apart from the quiz, we were also uh, trying to, you know, have fun, enjoy the environment in Achimota School and all that. So it was, it was a very interesting year for us, actually. I see. I'm, I'm looking forward to hearing more of these stories as the conversation goes on. Um, what about you? Uh, Shelter, what what can you tell? What what do you think it is your favorite memory from the NSN two thousand and four? Um, so there, there are quite a number of, um, of of significant moments, but um, I think uh, as a whole, our contest with Presec uh, stands out, and I think it's something that has lived with me and uh, probably with my colleagues as well. And but my specific uh, moment will be uh, when I was able to answer, I think the second uh, riddle uh, on the first clue to get uh, five points. Um, it was, uh, there's quite a budget on race as well. We, we were very much uh, pumped for that particular contest uh, because of, um, let's say uh, in quotes, what, what, what I would say was a personal vendetta for all of us. We all knew um, other colleagues in Presec, and Presec was the reigning champions as well. So we're really pumped up for that quiz. Um, I think we did quite well to the fifth, uh, to the fifth round. Um, uh, Presec had a couple of um, throw or false rounds, so we are giving them uh, a sizable lead. But we had the first riddle correctly, but they came back and they had a second riddle, I think, on the, on the second clue. So, um, that gave them four points, I think. Um, so in my mind, I was like, hey, we've done very well in like almost coming close to making it to the finals. Like, are these guys going to sort of like Surprise. take their, yeah. the rest of the riddles of me? Yeah, so I was like, hey, then like I told the guys before DG. So um, the riddle went, um, and then after the first clue, a sort of a light bulb uh, moment came in my head. Um, it was about between centripetal force and centrifugal force. Um, so I actually told uh, KG to press the bell. <laughs> and when he pressed the bell, we were all shocked because they were like, what is this guy trying to do? And I sort of told them in uh, Pigeon English, Charlie, you guys remind me which guy is the twin and which guy is looking um, inwardly. Because I wanted to differentiate and process the answer within those few seconds that KG was pressing the bell. And they told me, yeah, yeah it was um, the twin that was looking inside. So you just click that and it will be centrifugal force. I said it and yeah. Um, so I think that was, the right answer. Yeah, it was the right answer. So that was like my standout moment, I would say. Um, Evans, yes. I think I'll, I'll come to you. What was your standout moment then? Yes, for, for St. Peter's at that time, we never did trials. In fact, our one of our teachers, tutors, Ion, we all call him Ion. He will tell you that if you are ready for St. Peter's, meet us at the finals. Yes. So coming to Accra was a whole new experience for us. I remember during the evenings, uh, we were sharing like 
we were in one class and the other class was occupied by the girls from Archbishop Quarters. And then uh, one of us will go and ask for a duster, bring it, then give it to another colleague to send it. And then when it comes, another will go for let's say a chalk, give it to another colleague to, to repeat it. But that's actually on the lighter side. I remember clearly our contest with Presec. As Shelter mentioned, we were really prepped for Presec. So when we start on stage, I look at, uh, I think, Okaipi, the guy, the tall guy in the middle. Then he has were on the decks and he was shivering. That's what I, I think I saw. Then I told Shelter, Zivit, Charlie, check like these guys, they are afraid of us. So Charlie, we will win. So mm -hmm. for me, that, that's my moment. That, that's very, I, I like the, the, the camaraderie, the, the way you guys are, you're speaking pigeon on stage, you're just calming each other down and giving each other, it's, it's very nice. It shows that the NSMQ is a team sport and it's, it's, it's better when the whole team is involved. Um, so I'll come back to Evans with this question. How did you feel when you made it to the final that year? I mean, I know the preset contest is clearly a, a, a sweet spot for you guys and it's one of your favorite memories but what was the experience of the final like i mean up until the well, point it was, where it, it was, was very down. good honestly uh we i and i believe the same goes for my team we had no iota of doubt that we were going to lose the finals uh, we thought it was going to be a walk in the park honestly so we were very happy we were very very confident in, in, in fact that evening we didn't really study. We were just happy, excited, and then just whiling away the time because we felt, uh, because we had watched the, uh, if you look at the score, uh, NS mentioned that from the 1-8, one 1-8 eight, one eight and uh, the semifinals, we had the highest mark. Highest score. So in fact, yeah. the schools around felt we were really a team to beat. So the feeling was great. We thought it was going to be an easy ride. So that was actually the feeling. Until... Um, Shelter, what about you? What was your feeling during the final? Wow, wow. Um, I'll say, I'll say um, it, it was a feeling of euphoria. Um, it, it would be difficult to put those feelings um, into words, actually. Um, because really, really, um, after our preset contest, as KG just alluded to, we really thought uh, we had reached, <laughs> to be honest. <laughs> like, yeah, so, and, and um, as, as you said earlier on, um, we're a great team and we're friends as well. So, and um, and then the casting members as well, like those who didn't come on stage, but were part of the larger group, they all played a big role. So when we got there, everybody was, what, I would say, ecstatic. Everybody was ecstatic, I would say, yeah. So I'm going, I'm going to direct my next question at DJ Ziegler. Um, from the time that you finished the quiz, I mean, you guys didn't win, but you still left a huge impression. And 18 years later, we are talking to you. Um, how did participating in the quiz affect the trajectory of your life? Um, what, what do you think it helped you to? How do you think it helped you to become the man you are today? Well, yeah. So actually, the NSMQ helped us a lot, uh, a lot because I would even start from uh, even uh, the B, uh, the BEC, uh, sorry, the, sorry. So SSC, right? I'll start from the SSC. So basically, uh, because of the NSMQ preparations, after NSMQ, all of us were so adept at all the subjects that. Sometimes you sit down and you are read those times we do uh, the NSMQ before we write the SSCs. So you sit down and you are preparing for your SSC and you are flipping through the book. And it's as if you know everything that is in the book. Like you flip through and you look at this page and go like, oh, I know this, I know this, I know. And it was, it was really, it was, it was funny because actually in, 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 in the chemistry paper like this, majority of us were done like what, an hour before before time and everyone was just sitting down with the legs crossed like that's how good it was the nsmq the impact of the ns that's how good it was it made you feel so confident and then at that point you know you you feel like you you are you become a role model in your society 
people are looking up to you in your family, in your uh, your uh, neighborhood, and you 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 have no option. You cannot settle for less. You know, you 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 have this feeling of you have to make it. You have to uh, um, aim for higher than the moon. You know, basically. So it, it's that's that's the impact it, ha it had on me, basically. Yeah. Yes. So it, it pushed you to become the best version of yourself to the yes. point that when you were preparing for your SSC, you were just coasting. That's 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 very impressive. Yes. Um. So back to Evans. I I know that you follow the quiz. Um. Very. I wanted to use the word religious, but I know you follow the quiz very closely, and you are credited with setting up a committee. Um, you 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 liaise between the old students of St. Peter's and the current NSMP team. Um, can you tell us a little bit about that? What prompted this and what's the story behind that? Yes, so after our NSMP in 2004, uh, one advantage is that uh, I started teaching in remedial schools. You know, our time after SS, you wait for one year before you go to the university. So if I go to a remedial school, I tell them, oh, um. So, so and so, NSM kill finalists. Then they don't even, I mean, easily they give me a rule to, to teach. So I was making some, some points. Uh, I got the opportunity to train 2006 in John's Grammar School. And then they, I got them to the quarterfinals. But after then, I stopped following the NSM kill. So shelter came down from UK in 2017. And I told them, oh, let's go and watch our contest. That was the Gadasu versus uh, Butri contest, Infantry Game contest. So we sat down, we watched and realized our guys had raw talent, but uh, some technique, some strategy was lacking. So unfortunately, we lost that contest. So I told Shelter that, no, we have to really do something about that. So I started by forming a committee of former NSMK contestants to see how we can plan and help our uh, alma mater. And I think it really yielded good results because in 2018, luckily we won. We've not really performed bad and we're hoping to take it this year too. Well, all the best to St. Peter's for that thing. Thank you for your interest in helping your school to stay as one of the strongest teams in the NSMQ to date. Um, my next question is to Shelter. It's actually from our audience. Um, Adam Teria Kwame has a question here, but I guess the next the next part of the, the chat is about your life after the MSMQ and your time in school. So before I get to the question, I'm going to ask Shelter about his his time after the MSMQ and what he did with himself up to this point. So. Yeah, so um, yeah, uh, after the NSMQ, um, I also took uh, a few uh, teaching gigs around my community. <laughs> and because of the exposure from the NSMQ, um, I was able to charge like the highest bucks. Um, parents were, were happy to give me like any amount just to um, teach their kids, even if it was like teaching them from primary or even genesis, like extra classes and all that. Um, but I think. Uh, just going along the lines of what um, Ziglar said, the, um, the, the major impact the NSMQ had on my life was um, the fact that you become a role model automatically, like whether you like it or not, um, from the community, from uh, people in um, people in your genius who passed through uh, St. Peter's. And this this in a way makes you, as you also said earlier, uh, the best version of yourself, really. Um, there were a lot of people who sent me messages or maybe through my brother was, who went to school after me and were like, oh, I'm their role model, they are looking up to me and all that. Sometimes even people were doing business from other schools as well, business and general arts and all that. And um, actually some of them have even gone on to do exploits um, that I think far outweigh what I set out to do. So even though I become their role model, in a way, I take inspiration from them as well. I have like some business and general art students who have gotten offers to uh, Harvard, Yale, and uh, Chicago Boot Schools, just because they said, 
I was, I was sort of their mentor. And I'm like, oh, I mean, I have not even done. <laughs> I have not even had such one. So, to be honest, they also uh, motivate me to go as high as I can and then to get people along um, the journey as well. That's, that's really inspirational. Um, BJ Ziegler, please. Your, your time, I know you went to medical school in KNUST. Um, can you tell us a little bit about your time in medical school and how it shaped who you are and the, the kind of extracurricular activities you did? I mean, I know DJing is definitely going to feature in there. Yeah. So, well, in, in, med, in med school, uh, you know, you, you in, in high school, you are a bit more, sometimes I think you are, you are gearing towards more, being more academic, right? And then when you get to university, sometimes you, you try to balance your life, right? So basically in, in med school, I think from, I think right up from my fourth year, I, I used to be uh, mixing songs at friends' parties uh, just for the fun of it, nothing serious, you know. But some way, somehow, my friends would, would enjoy what I was doing and would keep motivating me and say, and, and keep saying that I'm really good at what I'm doing. And so I should keep on doing it. So it kept me going. And then when I was done with my medical school, I started house job in uh, Cape Coast. And in Cape Coast, there's this beach resort called Oasis Beach Resort. And at that time, the, the, the owner was my friend. And uh, he, he, the DJ who used to uh, play for him was traveling. So he wanted a new DJ. And he asked if I could do it. And I was like, oh, I used to do it in med school. And he was like, yes, but he doesn't want you know, any amateur stuff. So he wants someone who is a professional. I was like, I can try. So he gave me a, a professional opportunity and from there, I played, people liked it. People came to listen and then started giving me offers elsewhere. Took me all the way to Takara. They took me to Buzwa, where I played at Asabaku Festival. Took me all the way to uh, Nkumasi. I remember I played one time at Vienna City um, and yeah, brought me to Accra, where I am currently at Alian Fase. So it's, 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 been a, it's been a good journey for me as well in that aspect. So, um, Evans, did you, did you hang out with um, Ernest a lot when both of you were at KNUSD? <laughs> not, not really, not really. Actually, it's uh, the NSMQ that really brought us together. We were in the same class, Science 1, but uh, in our class, we were kind of divided into two. The East Siders, like I was in the East Siders, those were, let's say, Stray, Creepy, sort of. And then the West Siders, you could guess, then was for the West Siders. And <laughs> Zip and Zibit, Shelter aligned more towards the West Siders. Yes. But then when we went to Tech, I had less interaction with, with Ziegler. But then there is one interesting thing. Uh, I was in the same class with one contestant from Ogasco. He is currently the lecturer at UHAS. Uh, he was. And then another contestant from National. For the National contestant, we became so close and business partners. Actually, we started planning files in school. I, I like business. So yeah. I, start, I started selling books. In fact, people knew I like selling. So they go for books and then they will bring it to me. I'll put something so on top and then and sell. But as I mentioned, networking is one of the benefits I really got from the NSM team. So I had Michael Panza from the national team and then Richard Asen. So together with two other guys, we formed, we set up our first business and that was the wholesale pharmaceutical business. So you see the NSM team has really had an, an, an impact. An impact, I see. So it's, it's not even just about pet, pet Cuba and yeah. Yes, it's, it's nice to see that you, you still formed bonds with people from other schools. So I think most of the first covers in our stream wanted to hear more about you know, your days on campus, your, your time in the school, the teachers that used to give you wahala or the teachers that used to inspire you. And, and so I'm going to just let us go a little bit to that. Saw me some of your stories from your first days. I'm going to start with 
DJ Ziggler. And uh, so we'll, we'll make it three ways. Your favorite memory from first school, your favorite teacher, and a particular spot on campus that means a lot to you. Okay. So, okay. That, uh, so yeah. So, well, I mean, I'll start with uh, Pesco Bowers, uh, or Pesco, sorry. Pesco was uh, a very motivating place. I mean, I would, I would say that right from the onset, you enter a school where you, you saw role models from all walks of life. Our seniors, two years ahead of us, that's Alebna, Alebna's group, were so motivational. Like, you, you put up a post on Facebook about the golden generation, right? Talking yeah. about from 2000 all the way to 2006. And if you look at that cohort, this is a group of guys who kept motivating each other. Right from, I can mention names. I mean, the school prefect was super prim and proper. The assistant school prefect, Oseado, was prim and proper. Like you would, you, you, you would see such people as a young first year uh, student and you are motivated. You want to be like them, you know? And that was what pushed us to be better or who we are now, you know, right from the onset, the school itself is very motivational. Academically, you go and you hear about Avonion and all that, it was good. But my favorite memory was, uh, I think about, so I was a science club president, you know, and before I, 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 I stood for the post, uh, we had four science classes and uh, each science class was supposed to bring one person to, to stand for the post. And Shelter, Evans and I were in the same class, Science 1. And I tried to represent Science 1, but Evans wanted to also go for the position. So for Science 1, for Science 1, we had two representatives from Science 1, and then the other classes had one. And that, in a way, would reduce the votes that you would get, right? Because your class people are going to have to be split between two. So what I did was, I was thinking, I was like, I, I went around talking to the people in science one secretly, you know, I was telling them, you know, you guys, Evans is, 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 is too serious, you know, he's, he's strict, you know, if, if you vote for me, right, I, your, your trip to Centrosis is booked. Right? <laughs> and, 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 I, and I won the position hands down, because at that time, Centrosis was a big deal. You know, if you say Centrosis, <laughs> that's, everybody that's, will fall in line. Yes, yes, exactly. Case closed. So, so that was one of my favorite uh, memories. Uh, my favorite teacher was uh, Mr. Mwakun. Uh, he was he obviously taught biology, and biology was my favorite. So I, I, that was my favorite spot on campus was uh, <laughs> uh, well the entertainment hall. Basically, because I used to try and balance my academics with uh, entertainment but prioritizing academics but yes try to balance find a balance so yes my favorite spot was the entertainment hall that's interesting mm -hmm. who would have known that the nsmq teams one of the nsmq teams golden boys favorite spots would be the entertainment hall mm -hmm. um, so shelter same question to you favorite memory favorite teacher favorite spots on campus yeah, so um, with with favorite memory, uh, I've got to go with um, periods of uh, relaxation that we used to have uh, because in in science one and in the science classes, like things could get uh, a bit competitive. So when you um, uh, just try to get a balance right, um, when you have any chance to let out, um, I think it's a good opportunity to take. So um, Ziggler actually started his uh, DJ skills from there. Um, usually before prep or before we go for dining hall, he'll be using his cutlery, he'll be using the fork and the spoon, and then he'll be like his, um, his DJ spoon, and then he'll be making noise, trying to make some beats. And um, I had to wear like very thick glasses then. <laughs> so there was, there was a friend of mine who also used to wear glasses. Uh, he's actually from Maroon King. He was a very good friend of mine. Um, so Ziggler will be DJing, and then uh, this friend of mine with Maron King will be trying to perform, and they used to call us the, the blind messiahs, actually. <laughs> <laughs> Ziggler will be DJing, just doing his thing with the spoon and cutlery, and then we'll go to the front of the class just to, you know, while I wait time, especially after maybe learning a bit um, during prep time or something, just to 
um, yeah, keep things uh, a bit easy and not too serious. Um, I've seen my uh, my favorite teacher was actually um, a physics teacher. Uh, he's called Lexis. Um, I I I took to him because um, he I think he had just come from uh, KNUST. He had um, he was like a graduate teacher, and um, he brought around a good uh, and different way of teaching physics. And he actually made me like physics very well. Physics was actually my uh, best subject in school. So he actually made me like physics well. And he took me to different levels. He, he could actually sometimes um, mark me down when he knew I didn't got some access correctly, um, just to push me because he thought I was, um, he thought I was becoming complacent. So he, he really pushed me to very high levels. And I think um, before I finished SS, my physics was, uh, was quite good thanks to him. Um, and then with, with my favorite sports, um, I would say it was the base. Um, I, used to, I used to go and uh, the base is like a sport on, uh, uh, on campus where they sell food and stuff. So I usually used to go with music like because I started my friend before even the NSMK and stuff. So we used to go together, I'd get food, get to Reginald, Bizarre, Eugene, and some of my other colleagues. And yeah, just eat together. The comrades were eating together. Yeah, what's, what's quite cool as well. That sounds very nice. Eating together, blind, blind, mesais, wrapping together. Um, <laughs> Evans, Evans, what was your favorite uh, memories from St. Peter's? Your your time, your time, your favorite sports on campus. Which teacher inspired you? All, all that. So uh, I was very strict then. So. Uh, we had one colleague who contested for the school preferred position and lost. He was called Arrow. His nickname was Arrow. So I think he was passing by and all of us, like the class, the class, there was a loud noise. Arrow, Arrow, Arrow. So Mr. Aja, our quiz coordinator, he was very, very strict. In fact, he was feared. So he <laughs> came to the class. Then he said, who are those howling? <laughs> then everybody was scared. And uh, a number of my colleagues were looking at my direction because they knew, hey, uh, KG is going to choke. <laughs> so he was, who, who are those howling? But I, apparently I was asleep. So I didn't see those who were, who were making the noise. And then the whole class had to be punished. <laughs> that, that for me is one of my, I mean, my favorite memories. Uh, my favorite teacher was Ion. Mr. Hanson, it's because when he comes to the class, he was always looking at, okay, who is finished? Who, did, who is done with it? With he puts a question on the board and wait for somebody. And for me, it helped me to practice my speed. So I really like him for that. <coughs> uh, interestingly, my favorite sport was the chapel. I was a chorister. So, you know, uh, when you go for rehearsals, it means you skip the groundwork. So for me, that was a place to really relax and then enjoy <laughs> grounds work. It means we have a very musical team because I have just found out that we have a chorister here, mm -hmm. we have a rapper here, we also have a DJ here. Very interesting mix from St. Peter's School. But if you are still tuned in, this is the NSMQ live chat. And today we are talking from we are talking to the team from St. Peter's SHS in 2004, who made it to the finals. Um, I like how Evans always says he used to be strict back in school because Patrick Akro Adai on Facebook has said that he knows you from Katanga Pan School. I, I'm trying to imagine the Evans in third school in Katanga School. We also have some comments from Prince Akona Asari who says, Shelter is my role model. And yes, I'm a business student. Um, Na Abua says he's so proud of you all. And Patrick Newton says, NS just like to chill. So, Ga Selassie Gawuga says, Zegla, they like chill too. So, every, everybody, everybody knows that NS is the, the chilling person in the group. Um, so, back to the chat. Uh, now, we've heard about your time on the place, we've heard about your time in high school, we've heard about your time in uni. 
let's talk a little bit about your careers and the work you do now. Um, I know two of you are now medical doctors, so what inspired you to go into that profession? I know a lot of the work you're doing is very specialized and very specific to certain things that um, touch your heart. And I'm going to start with squadron leader because he is a pharmacist and also in the army. So it's, it's interesting to see that combination. It's not fun. I don't think before, before you, I had I know anyone who is a pharmacist and also in the army. So what, what, what has been your career trajectory and how, how did pharmacy and the military life come together? Okay, my, that aspect of my life is still tied to the NSM field. The reason being that uh, my colleagues, the five of us, we formed a company called Sign of It. So we were looking for opportunities. We, were, we had a business proposal. So we went to, that was the first time going to Burma camp. So we went, we went to see the director of medical services. Uh, he was then Commodore Sua with our proposal. So when we went there, then my police will tell you, they never imagined I would join the military. No, that was the last thing on my mind. So when we saw, we met there, and I had my own perception about the military. I felt they were like bullies. So we met the director of medical services and some other kennels, and they were so down to earth. They were very, very receptive, and then they encouraged us to, to join the military. Uh, I was the least convinced, but then I was the only one among my five friends who, who joined. And for me, it has been a wonderful experience. Uh, one bit was that I'll get opportunity to, to travel, to go for peacekeeping locations. And I really wanted that opportunity to experience other cultures, travel around. So, uh, but remember I mentioned it was the business aspect. So we were still in the business with my team doing some co-sealing, we bought some taxis, and the other business that would come, we come together and then and then do it. Until so recently, I think for the past two, three years, I opened my pharmacies and by God's grace is doing quite well. We try to use technology to reach out to people. We just send snapshots of their medicine and then we try and do delivery. So we cut down on their their waiting time and then uh, give them the convenience of receiving the medication in their homes. That's, that's very impressive. And, and then, and then my, my current area is oncology. So uh, I had a, a bit of a stint in Tamale. I was posted there as a five garrison pharmacy. One thing about the military is that for almost all the regions we have, or where we have base, we have let's see a mini clinic attached. We call it the medical reception stations. So interestingly, when I went to Tamale, I met Fatal, Ali, and Ahmed. They were with the Tamale team. And we had quite an interesting time there. So from Tamale, I came down to back to Accra, went to the dialysis unit, the TB unit, and then my boss, Colonel Adi, taxed me to set up the oncology pharmacy. Uh, it's, it's been very interesting because I've always wanted a, a unique area to, to kind of specialize. And it's interesting trying to help uh, manage patients with, with, with cancer. You know, it's quite an emotional area, but once you see your parent, your patient, or your what we call a client getting better, I mean, it's, it's just an overwhelming feeling. You feel good that people who are really down and they thought they've lost it all would just come back and then be happy. We've had people come back and really appreciate it because uh, they felt we were really committed. We went the extra mile to really uh, help with the, with the management. That's, that's, that's really inspiring. Um, cancer is an emotional issue. And it's nice to see that you got to specialize and the Ghana Army is pushing you to touch people's lives and do all that. Um, so, to I'll move this to DJ Zegla. So he, he tells us a little bit more about his career trajectory um, after medical school in Kenya. What, wh where did you work? What work did you do? And how did you land up working in um, emergency as an emergency specialist? Yeah. Yeah. So uh, 
basically after medical school, I was posted to the Cape Coast Teaching Hospital. And that was actually the first time I was I was I was going to Cape Coast. So there I was uh, I did my house job, and uh, after completing house job, I was I was I was I had interest in radiology actually, which includes like you know the part of medicine where you have to read images and interpret and then do interventional stuff basically. But uh, the medical director at that time, who is now the current CEO of uh, Cape Coast Teaching Hospital, who is also my second partner, basically, uh, he, he, he asked that I stay in the emergency department of Cape Coast Teaching Hospital because they were lacking medical officers. So basically, he, he asked me to stay there for a while, and then uh, with time, you move me back to the radiology department. But when he posted me there, I realized I really... I started enjoying my stay at the emergency department. I was active, you know, I like being active. I hate sitting in one place for a long time. And, and that was helpful, you know, because I like being active. I like to help people who are in pain and suffering and all that. And I realized that my knowledge in emergency medicine was not adequate. So then there was uh, an opportunity for me to go to Confanoche to specialize in emergency medicine. That was in 2015, and I applied for it. And whilst at Confanoche, I met a lot of uh, very helpful role models, Dr. Chris Opon, Dr. Ose Kwame, Dr. Maxwell Ampofo. They really helped me a lot. They, they helped me become who I am as an emergency physician, Dr. Rocky Oting. He, brought, he actually brought the program to Ghana. So there, I, 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 I was exposed to a lot of uh, new things, my knowledge uh, increased, and then I completed and I came back to Cape Coast to help run the emergency department. And then with time, I felt like uh, I needed further uh, sub-specialization in critical care. And so that's what brought me to Kolebu, uh, that where, where I currently am, and uh, to specialize, uh, to sub-specialize in critical care, to try and help uh, improve my skill set and give be, give uh, better uh, healthcare services to my to my patients basically it's, it's nice to hear that mo most of your career path was inspired by your mentors and the, the doctors you worked um, yes. ahead of you it's, it's nice to see the older generation linking with the, the next generation and i can see that you guys are also doing that kind of work because most of the comments here, and we have comments from a lot of people talking about how shelter, Andrew Young says, shelter is my mentor, top, top assets for Malagana. So I'm going to now bring the conversation to shelter. Um, who is everybody's mentor? So shelter, who is your mentor? And what, 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 what help and how did you end up where you are today? Okay, so... Um... I would say I would say one um, one person who shaped uh, my life um, towards the, the trajectory I'm on now is actually um, a, a teacher at St Peter's who also happened to be my uncle. Uh, he, he's called Mr Ajak. So he he was the coordinator of the quiz at that time too. Um, what what in St Peter's um, there was there was. I mean, I was um, I was doing well in school, um, and I had a lot of people looking up to me. So at that young age, um, if you don't take care sometimes, it can really get into your head and derail you. So there were times that, to be honest, um, with a tag of people telling me, oh, natural shark, natural shark, it sometimes uh, got to me that like, I became very lazy. Um, and then took my eyes off the books and stuff. But he's someone who um, who disciplined me. He actually lashed me sometimes, uh, a couple of times. Ziggler and I, when we went to reward, he would call us and lash us. We still have the marks at our back. So at that young age, he's somebody who um, um, shaped my path because it could have gone the other way if I wasn't put on track. I was becoming complacent and uh, very lazy. So he, he actually directed my early path. But um, after SSE, as I told you, I'm a medical doctor now, but physics was my favorite subject in school. 
So what I've chosen, uh, what course to do in uh, what course to do in tech? Um, I actually chose electrical first, medicine second, and then I'll change again, and then I'll cancel. No, uh, med medicine first, electrical second, and then I'll call Ziggler. Actually, what make I choose? Like, so I was going back and forth, back and forth, um, and then I, I was able to speak to um, our senior colleagues who were in Kolebu by that time who were able to guide me as to, and then guide me towards what I really wanted and what my strong assets were, right? So um, even though I started electrical a month or so in tech, I had a scholarship to go to Russia and I decided to pursue medicine just because of the guidance from our seniors, um, Alebna, Apiria, the 2002 batch especially, and then from, um, from Fire and Jeff as well, who were also our seniors uh, who had gone by. So they actually, encouraged me to go towards the path of medicine. Um, whilst in medical school in Russia, um, I found out that in my pre-med year, um, we're doing chemistry, biology, physics, and all that. And I could find that like I could get 90 something in physics and then biology, I'll still pass, but I'm like, I might go on the right path. And again, I had mentors from um, um, Nigeria actually, um, who were ahead of me in the faith of CTA, who also guided me and taught me this was the real path to go. And with medicine, the world can be your oyster, and you could add on any physics or whatever you wanted to do. So that actually pushed me to the specialty I'm doing now, because uh, I'm doing medicine, but uh, I'm specializing in nephrology. So even though it's medicine, there's a lot of mathematics that goes on in there. There's a lot of figures. There's a lot of... Uh, um, electrolytes, numbers, fidgeting with um, dialysis machines and all that. So that's what um, led me to where I am now. So um, the, the, the import of mentors, it's very important and people to um, guide you, especially when you are young, is very important. So this, this um, even led me to go around um, senior high school sometimes, just try to mentor people especially those who are good, warning them about not being too complacent, and those who are in split minds trying to uh, find out people's strength at early stages and then direct them towards particular pathways to harness their potential or their strengths well, because that's what will make us um, the best versions of ourselves. So, uh, uh, Tony, we, we can't hear you. Sorry. Um, so I said I love it. This is this is a it's a very interesting part for all of you. I like that the general theme is that you got guidance from people who are who are your mentors, people who inspired you. And from the comments I'm seeing, uh, Patrick Newton says these guys made us proud for all Pesco, but these guys are out. These guys are our claim to fame. Um, Justice, I see Edwin Yamiche, who is also known as Obasima from Pempe College, is one of the NSMQ coordinators. Says, God bless you guys. You have really appreciated your teachers, trainers, and coordinator. Um, Jeremy Aqua says, very big inspiration for me. Today will forever be a red letter in my life. Okay. Um, Minka Eduse, I think it's Eduse Pupu, says, I am surprised Shelter is not doing physics at NASA. Um, I think someone else who had a comment that um, Dixon Pato said, Shelter said physics was his favorite subject and KG also said math was his. How come they all chose the medical field and not engineering? So I think that's, that's the question we'll get, get to. But um, before that, I have a follow-up for Shelter from Adum Teriapan, who wants to know how you ended up in the UK as a physician. Oh, okay, okay. So, um, so I came back from Russia, I think, 2012, and had to write an uh, exam with the Medical Council, and I started house job in 2013, um, in 2013, I think. Yes, yeah, I think some military hospital. So I went through, I went through uh, um, two years of house job, all actually in the military hospital. And uh, after finishing it, what I realized was like, um, doctors in Ghana, I think, we were doing amazingly well. We're like, 
I think like comparing here, I think we do so much compared to the resources we had. Um, but I, I saw that what was really lacking was things like um, diagnostics and how maybe you may request a blood test and either because of uh, a lack of funds or because of lack of um, unavailability or access, it could take days to come, in which case you, are not, you don't really know exactly what you are dealing with. And um, it's obviously may have their consequences. So, um, okay, uh, I, had, I had a partner at that time who, who uh, was, told me about opportunities outside and I was like, um, the best way to uh, make an impact in Ghana, right, is to learn from best practices outside and then come and impact back in, in Ghana. So I wrote the exam, um, it was uh, the club exam to go to the UK, and uh, yeah, worked in London um, uh, for some time and then came to training uh, in Norwich right now. So what is even driving me more is the fact that um, I'm even taking a year out of training to do clinical biochemistry, which will enhance uh, our diagnostics back home. So go more into research, go into things peculiar to Ghana and make uh, um, diagnostics, especially lab, lab diagnostics, easy and accessible to, uh, to Ghanaians. So that's, that's how I went to UK and that was my motivation for going to come and learn from best practice and then uh, impact Ghana or uh, help with easy access to diagnostics especially. Thank, thank you for your answer. Um, Abdul, I hope your question has been answered. And uh, if you want to practice in the UK, you can follow um, Shelter's templates. But uh, so my next question, I'm directing this at um, DJ Ziegler. Um, what, are, what are your future? I mean, you've already told us you're yeah, thinking of settling down, but what are some of your other future plans? Are we, are we expecting a, a mixtape this year? Are we... Are we expecting a, a book or something? So th this, this question is to all of you, but I'm starting with uh, DJ Zegla. Uh, okay, yes. For, so for the mixtape, yes, definitely there will be a mixtape this year. I'm, I'm working on one that I'll release very soon for everyone. Um, but my future plans are, you know, uh, trying immediate future plans just to fit, complete my uh, subspecialty in critical care. Because it's one of the areas that we are really lacking uh, in, 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 in the country. And COVID brought that out for everyone to see. Um, and when I'm done with that, I, I plan to go back to Cape Coast Station Hospital, where I came from, and then try and make some changes to help impact the healthcare system over there and uh, nationally uh, easily accessible to uh, all my patients and everyone that assesses the healthcare system. Um, I'm also looking at uh, trying to, you know, healthcare, technology and healthcare are really closely matched outside Ghana, right? But somehow in Ghana, we, we are not benefiting from technology's impact uh, on healthcare. Actually, we started even using an electronic medical record system, what, a few years ago. That is not good enough. There's a lot. There's a lot of. Uh, there are a lot of areas that we can we can look at in terms of technology. Medical simulation is one of them. Um, thinking about how we can use we can start manufacturing our own biomedical equipment as well is also one area that I am interested in as well to help uh, improve uh, the healthcare delivery service in Ghana and then to create awareness because people people are also not aware of my specialty that's emergency medicine. And not a lot of people know about us, but we, we th there's a lot of us around them. We are making a, a huge impact, basically. Yeah. Um, but I may end by saying that uh, this is outside, I don't know, if this is outside the question that you asked. It's not related to my future uh, uh, plans, but it, it just came to mind. Uh, when Shota was talking about Mr. Aja, and I was thinking that maybe it's about time that uh, NSMQ thought about a trainer or a coordinator appreciation uh, uh, forum. You know, there are some trainers that have been long standing. Like you, 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 you put up in your post about uh, the golden generation. 
the sole person who was responsible for this golden generation is Mr. Aja, hands down. Yeah. Like from the from when the quiz started. If you watch all the videos, he's right in the front seat. He's the he's the one with the glasses, and he's he's. I mean, all all kudos to him. I mean, he he did all the work. And then if you look at Achimota, I don't know the name of their coordinator, but he they also had a very popular coordinator amongst them who had been also long serving for a long time. So maybe uh, it's about time NSMQ can look into a long serving coordinator appreciation on the side and maybe we can say thank you to them as well because they've really, really made us who we are. I think I'll end with that. I mean, we, we definitely considered that uh, we, all the plans that involve coordinators will hopefully be released this year everyone will get to see the people behind the scenes doing all this amazing work. But it's nice to hear that your future plans involve improving healthcare delivery in Ghana and among other things. Um, I will move on to squadron leader. <laughs> what are your future plans? I mean, growing the pharmacy, all those things. So uh, I try to always narrow down focus so that the impact will be greater. It's like pressure. You get it. Once the area is small, with a little force, it will be the pressure will be greater. So uh, I'm heading the oncology pharmacy. I try to make sure that I provide the patients with the best of care. Somebody was talking about mathematics and why pharmacy. Uh, you cannot do pharmacy if you are not very good with mathematics. No. When I go into the cytotoxic preparation room and I'm reconstituting the chemo <laughs> drugs, it's all about calculations. <laughs> Otherwise, if you're not careful, you are going to kill the patient. No. No. So with my pharmacy too, I have uh, two branches. It's called Dinkunim Pharmacy Limited at in the Gar South. One at the uh, English Yaman Home, the market complex, and the one opposite the Western University College. What we do, because we realize that a lot of Ghanaians, they, they report late. And cancer, one thing about cancer is that depending on the type of cancer and then the, the time of reporting, if you report very early, the prognosis is very good. Of course, it also depends on the type of cancer. So I created something like the Inclinium Health Outreach, where we go to churches, I bring the experts, oncology nursing specialists, and we do breast screening, just so that we can pick it early. So. For me, that's the future. I want to really narrow down in oncology, maybe breast, and see how I can uh, research and do things which is really tailored. And when you go online, you realize a lot of the research is in the Western world, not really peculiar to the Ghanaian environment. So that is what I want to really do. I've had a lot of conversation with, with Shelter about looking at how we can use AI to make uh, business and then our healthcare service better. So that is the future for me. Okay. So to our oncology enthusiasts listening, this is the future. And, uh, <laughs> those who can partner with Squadron Leader to make this a reality, please do so. Um, to Shelter, what are your future plans? I mean, you mentioned learning best practices and bringing them back home. So. Yeah, exactly. So it's like I sort of on it earlier on that like that was my motivation for uh, for coming so um, I intend to continue with my specialization in um, nephrology um, and then um, as I said go into um, research um, and then KG, KG mentioned it there as well uh, so in my spare time as well I've been doing lots of um, data science um, trying to um, get into a bit of programming just so as he said what's very important is um, um, doing things which are um, which are very peculiar to our terrain. For example, in medicine like this, uh, in things like uh, dermatology, most of the things um, you see deal with uh, white skin or Caucasian skin. So there's really nothing for, for example, a uh, black skin to see. Come to talk of even uh, things peculiar to Ghana. So um, I think more research needs to go into this so that um, medicine in Ghana will be more uh, precision driven. So I intend to finish. Um, specialization in nephrology, 
try with the help of AI, data science, and more research to um, improve access to diagnostics um, as a whole, and then to try and set up a sort of a, a, a renal transplantation program uh, where um, anybody who is uh, coming with any injury to the kidneys uh, can have uh, management for it, right from just IV fluids to things like dialysis machine, which is what I'm dealing with now, to things like even uh, renal transplantation, which which uh, it's not widespread in Ghana now. So uh, my hope is that in the future we'll be able to have an integrated program that will cater for Africa, by especially Ghana, to our needs. <laughs> All these all these plans sound like such game changers, and, and I mean, all to be in the same space with you guys. But, and uh, I'm looking forward to seeing that happen. But um, we have another comment from Paul William Pofori. He he says, "Can the team tell us why they couldn't answer the last riddle, even though it is rumored Shelter had written the answer on his sheets?" <laughs> Uh, so, so, so I knew, I knew um, this question will come up and um, the 2004 year group specifically and then um, PESCO as a whole within that period, uh, it's like they can't forgive us for, for, for not taking that competition, which I understand because um, to be honest with you, let me use this opportunity to uh, uh, um, give a thumbs up to them. Uh, the 2004 year group and PESCO as a whole, because of the, uh, the confidence they had in us. Um, it might seem like we are center stage, but the confidence and belief they had in us, to be honest, propelled us to where we, were, where, where we got to, to be honest. So um, I'm sorry we disappointed them. Let, let me bring in a, 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 funny, a funny thing before I answer that question, right? Um, one of the 2004 year groups, one of my business uh, mates, he's called Goro. So 10 years after the quiz or so, or even 12 years when I finished uh, uh, house job, I met him at Republic at Osu. So he saw me, we have not met him like, we have not met after school. So he saw me and he's like, ah, that is that shelter guy. This is the guy who broke my heart and St. Peter's heart. And everybody there was like looking at us. And <laughs> so um, I know, I know it's, uh, 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 they can't really seem to understand, but um, the, Finals of the National Science and Maths quiz is um, it's really a difficult it's a difficult trophy to take home to be honest. It's just like the Champions League in football. Like you go there, you know you are good, but there are schools who are equally good as well, right? And um, there are a lot of things that go into it for you to win. It's not just about you being talent, you being uh, talented, or you being the best. No, there's a lot that goes into it. There's um, a lot of discipline, a um, lot of composure, you know, like um, having confidence, but then not underrating your opponents. So, like, there are a lot of dynamics that go into it. So, <laughs> I, I, I just beg the, um, the, the first class of all and two, the 2004 batch that, like, it just um, didn't go our way. Yes, we have some of the riddles. Um, I remember some of them, they were between model and hypothesis. Others was between, I think, muscles and something. But we wanted to get them on either fours or fives, just so we could bridge the gap that um, we had lost through uh, the true or false. So yes, we had the answers written down, but it was either one or the other. And unfortunately, we went for the other one. But these things, these things happen. And um, it, it doesn't really change us. It doesn't really change PESCO as a whole. I think, yes. Uh, uh, um, it's, it's, it's just one of those things. Maybe Zigla may want to add in a, a bit to that. Oh, it's, it's fine. You said everything. It's fine. <laughs> um, so I guess this is my last comment here. Um, James Freeman Gia. This still says, it was a pleasure to have stayed with you guys. Proud of you all. Um, so now I'm just going to ask for your closing remarks. If you have any... Uh, message to the PESCO NSMQ team, to other PESCO by listening, to other NSMQ contestants tuned in, um, to the world, anyone, you, your message for, uh, for those tuning in. So I'm going to start with 
uh, NS. NS. So your message to our fans. Well, my message is quite short. Uh, first of all, like as usual, we 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 are grateful to NSMQ and Prime Time for giving us the opportunity to 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 be mentors, to be role models to to everyone else, uh, to to the younger generation and to Ghanaians as well. And it's nice catching up. It's it's a very good opportunity that you gave us, and we thank you for that. Um, I mean, I would just say that based on the NSMQ and what we went through, uh, I would like to tell future contestants that uh, whatever that they set themselves to do in life, they should try and see it through to the end. You know, they shouldn't let their guard down at any point. See it through to the end and then come out with flying colors. And yeah, keep on trying to have some balance in your life as well try and prioritize as you go along. Because in high school, you, you can prioritize academics over everything else. When you get to uni, you can try and balance it out. And the, the world is at your feet. You don't limit yourself. If something is not working for you, you always have to have a backup plan you know, and to go in another, in, in another direction and to try and uh, motivate yourself. You know? So yeah, basically, and then, yeah. I mean, they should expect, uh, <laughs> A mixtape from me this year, and uh, yes, we we'll all have fun. Maybe I can even end up becoming the official DJ of NSMQ. Uh, <laughs> like but that. yes, if you guys need my services anytime, I'm I'm available to to help out. So yeah, I'll, I think that I'll be sure to take you up on that then. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Um, thank you. Um, Shelter. What are your final words to us? I mean, the 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 legend of Pesco. <laughs> Um, so, so um, again, thank you for having us and thank you for your uh, platform and what um, the NSMQ is uh, doing in Ghana. I think it's a uh, good job you guys are doing and uh, would encourage you to carry on and uh, improve it as, as you can as the years go by. Um, so my, my final remarks for um, contestants will be to um, give it all their best right from round one right up to the end, right up to Mama Falls, right up to the last end. Um, I think that's what uh, we didn't do, especially in our final contest. So I think they can take a cue uh, from us. Um, and to, the, to any, anybody watching um, at all, um, I would say, even though it might not seem so at the moment, I, I really think um, you learn more from your um, you learn more from your setbacks uh, than your successes um, in life generally. Um, I actually think if, for example, we had won the quiz, uh, maybe my colleagues will bear this with me, I probably think I wouldn't have known um, anything more than I didn't know already, to be honest. But with the setback that, um, that we had, it makes you... Um, look inside, reflect, and then think about areas of improving. And to add this, um, because of those setbacks, that's what pushed me um, to go into greater heights, even in medical school. To the extent that I was the um, best international student in my um, pre-medical year, I uh, had one of the highest score in our physics exams in the university, and then I ended up with um, with a, a degree with distinction. Exactly. Yeah. Because, just because of the setback. Ironically, probably if everything had gone smoothly, I'd be like, yes, probably we had that good or be even more complacent, if you know what I mean. So um, I, I would say, learn from your setbacks, know yourself and be honest with yourself, um, know your weaknesses, work on them, and harness your strengths to be the best that you can. And then get mentors or get advice from people who have gone because it's easier and it's better to learn from their mistakes than you're going to repeat those same mistakes. And they've gone through so they can uh, guide you better. Definitely, definitely. So give it your best, learn from mentors. And um, if you should look at your setbacks as chances to learn and improve. So that's it's very inspiring. Um, we'll come to you, squadron leader. Uh, Give us some words of motivation. 
Sure, I will touch on support for the NSMQ team by old boys, old girls. With the current format and then the, the state of the NSMQ, no school will do well without the support of their old boys, old girls. It, it involves a lot, a lot of investment. I've been directly involved supporting mobilize and then it's, it's not an easy thing. The coordinators, the teachers are doing their best, but if the old boys, old girls don't help, uh, their school will not do well. So we want to encourage all old boys and girls of all the schools to really contribute, put in their best, because they, they take the bragging rights when their school does well. So uh, they should really invest in their school. I want to take the opportunity to appreciate uh, Dr. Atulinsi, James Atulinsi of uh, DL Properties. He's really invested a lot in St. Peter's NSMK. Yeah. Also, one medical doctor, Dr. Ting, who has sacrificed, he's a medical doctor, but has really dedicated his time to helping the tutors at St. Peter's to, to train the boys. Also, rally around to help the uh, alma mater. So both boys and girls, you've heard the words from our squadron leader here. Um, rally and support your school because when the glory comes, you are the one who enjoys the most. Um, so once again, it has been the NSMQ live chat. Tonight I have been talking with Dr. Ines Yeboa, Dr. Shelter Baka, and squadron leader KG Bibia Kudukuni, who's also a doctor. I didn't add that. Um, it's been a fun and insightful conversation. I've learned a lot. I've heard a lot about the NSMQ 2004. Please tune in next two weeks, um, the 10th of March, when we have another edition with a very special guest from the very first edition of the NSMQ. So be sure not to miss that. Once again, my name is Anthony Benjamin, and this has always been a primetime production. Thank you. <music>